Francis Sodeco here with Tirius Research, and I'm uh, sitting with Ziyad Ashgar, who is the new GM for the XR business at, at uh, Qualcomm. Uh, Ziad, we've been working together for a while now, Absolutely. you know, especially with your previous uh, role Absolutely. at, at uh, in AI. But uh, you know, now that we're here in Hawaii again, another year, I think it'd be a good time to kind of talk a little bit about uh, your new role. First of all, congratulations Thank on you. the new role. It's a, it's a big. Uh, I think with where AI is going, it's a really great spot for Absolutely. somebody like you. So um, maybe you know, it's just been a few months. Maybe tell us a little yeah. bit about how it's going. I think, uh, I mean, I just see that uh, there is a very interesting inflection point coming. Yeah. And I think it's coming in the form of, just like you said, right, AI and XR coming together, yeah. make for some amazing use cases. They make for the technology that allows us to be able to actually leverage the real benefits of AI in a very, very strong way, yeah. right? So just think about it, right, that if you have, for example, your smartphone or something, typically the smartphone camera is not exactly looking where you're looking at. But in the case of a smart glass, if you're wearing that, yeah. it sees what you see, it hears what you hear, and that part actually can really change the generative AI experience for you. We can talk a little bit more about it, but I think it's that uh, it's that cusp of AI and XR where I think there's going to be a lot of innovation. And really, the XR challenges that we have coming up from a perception perspective, from AI perspective and power perspective, these are really Qualcomm-sized problems. Yeah. These are the problems that Qualcomm really excels at doing. This is kind of connects extremely well with my uh, previous role as well, and that's why I'm super excited of being over here with uh, XR. Yeah, f absolutely. I mean, there's so many directions you can take mm -hmm. XR, uh, you know, for Qualcomm. Yeah. Um, you know, maybe we could talk a little bit about, how, in your view, mm -hmm. what you think you know, let's double double click a little bit on that. Sure. You know, it, within the overall Qualcomm strategy, there's there's obviously the larger strategy that Cristiano has mm -hmm. put out with you know diversifying your your revenue um, channels and so forth in the areas that you're in, and we're mm -hmm. seeing that play out. Right. Uh, but but also, I think there's the the, the AI strategy as Absolutely. well. So maybe let's double click about that. In your view, where do you see the that? XRAR role yeah. within that strategy. So I think we take that really, you know, high level look over here. Where are we coming from, right? We started with personal computing, right? Everybody has their la laptops and desktops and everything. And slowly we transition to mobile computing and everybody has a smartphone in addition to their laptop. Yeah. And what I envision is that as a next step, you go to spatial computing. And with spatial computing, now everybody will have these devices such as smart glasses or you know, mixed reality glasses, along with all the other wearables. I, I almost want to call it uh, the, the personal network around the human. Yeah. I think Cristiano put it very well that, you know, Qualcomm operates where the human is at, which is really on the body. So we're, I'm talking about devices like smart glasses and smart watches and earbuds uh, and all of those coming together to be able to really change the way we inter interact with the devices. You know, the human machine interface completely changing. For example, if you have a smartphone, you can typically type. There's a keyboard over there. But if you have a smart glass, you're not touching anything, right? right? There is no keyboard at this point in time. Yeah. You actually have to interface with it using your voice. voice yeah. So this is absolutely best position for agentic AI, yeah. right? This is the agent, this is the assistant that sits on your device, and you tell it to complete a task, and it's able to <clears throat> tap into multiple different applications. In fact, tap into multiple different devices around you. Yeah and then complete the task fully for you. And I think that's really the, the, the story. It really allows us to stitch together all of the different products that we have from Qualcomm in a very meaningful fashion. And then you can envision, right, that the AI that lives on the smartphone is still very usable for yeah. this experience, right? Yeah. So the way I'm driving the roadmap on the AR side, for example, we have the capability to run about a billion parameter model on the smart glass. Directly? On, a, on directly, oh, on the smart great. glass, yeah. exactly, right? So now you can imagine, you go for a run, you go for a, a bike ride. You don't need to take your phone. You yeah. can still have that same seamless experience with your assistant. Yeah. Uh, it's just a smaller model that's running. At the same time, if you look at an MR-like device, that actually has the exactly or very similar IP as to what we have in our smartphones. Mm -hmm. So I can actually run even a seven billion parameter model on the MR device. And then you extend it into a PC. We can run it you know, 13 or a 15 billion parameter model. You take it to the smartphone, you can do seven to 10 billion parameter model. You take yeah. it to an automotive, and you can do 30 do billion lot, parameter yeah. model, right? Because you have yeah. so much more AI capability, yeah. but yet you still have that great 5G link to be able to go to the cloud and then to be able to do much, much larger models like 100 billion 
parameter models are even more. Yeah, and we were just talking, I was just came out of a, a session with Durga, and, yeah. and one of the things that I took out of there is the fact that I think he mentioned the 8 billion parameter models of today are just as powerful and just as accurate mm -hmm. as the 170 billion parameters of of two years ago, exactly. and you know, and I think that trend is just going to continue because because AI is going to keep learning how to learn and totally. you know and and uh, and it's just going to get better. In and fact, better. to even add to that, right? I mean, one thing that happens is when a new modality comes in AI, the model is large. Yeah. Then the data gets curated, curated, curated. People yeah. basically make the model much smaller, but still very performant. Yeah. But I think what is even more interesting to me is what people call domain-specific models. Yes. Right. So yeah. let's say you are creating an application for medical needs. Yeah. or you're creating an application for hospitality industry, you can actually have a model that's trained on that material. You reduce the chances of hallucination anyways, but now with the full orchestration that's running on there, you augment that with other pieces of information that you have on all the devices that I talked about. Yeah. And now you have an experience that's far in excess of what anybody can have just in the cloud. Yeah, I think what's interesting, especially as you guys you know, do your full strategy, is a lot of things that you're doing are all kind of building blocks towards mm -hmm. that vision. Like you know, all the multimodal input capability, that, mm -hmm. that's perfect for like in an AR glasses type situation, right? Totally. Because you're talking via voice, but then you can say, you can refer to something you're seeing that mm -hmm. the camera is seeing, and that brings in as an input to, to what's going on. So that's... That's amazing. Yeah, and, and that's exactly right. So, like, I mean, the exact use case you talk, right? You could be standing in your kitchen and you say, hey, I want to, uh, you know, cook based on these ingredients. Yeah. Now, I can either take my phone and, you know, make it point towards that. Yeah. Or it can be a very seamless experience where the camera on your smart glasses yeah. takes that image to possibly the phone, processes it over there, brings it back to the ear, and essentially you just hear it back. Yeah. I think that's the kind of experiences that you can light up. Uh, with, a, with a smart glass and especially as I move it towards the place where we can do smaller models on the smart glass, it can be a completely wholly in the uh, completely fully contained device yeah. that actually is able to do those use cases very well. Okay, so it looks like models are getting there. Yeah. Um, you got other things like, you know, I was just at one of the demo rooms down down there, put on the MetaQuest 3 and, and mm -hmm. got to see like the, 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 full, city, the, the yeah. full city, which was yeah. just amazing. It was the first time I actually really... I mean, between the the video pass through and how how well that's working, yes. and also the you know being able to interact with your hands yep. on the digital interfaces, um, you know that's how. You know, I, I think to me the the kind of the end goal here is to have that kind of capability and that we have now with XR. Yes. To put it into regular glasses. Absolutely. Where you know fashionable the Ray Ban Meta type stuff. What do you think it's going to take for us to get there? Yeah, that's a great question, right? Yeah. So today, just like the case you talked about, we have amazing video C3 technology. Yeah. Number one, we've been investing in these technologies for the longest time. We acquired multiple teams. We have all of what we call the XR perception technologies in-house, right? So these are like hand tracking some of the experiences that you, uh, you took through uh, in, in the demo. But we also have things like SLAM and, you know, 3D reconstruction and plane detection yeah. and all of those technologies. But what it will take now is from the video see-through world to change it to the optical see-through yeah. world, right? Just, yeah. So with it's smart glasses, there. you can have optical see-through. You put in simple displays now, which, yeah. by the way, is another big uh, factor that was still lagging. So number one step, you are able to basically now bring in the displays. Displays are being produced with waveguide-like technology at pretty high volumes and at a reasonable price point. So you get glasses that have displays. Now you actually use optical see-through. You still have all the perception technologies. You interact with the world with your hands. Mm -hmm. And basically, the hand tracking and all those investments that we have made, they flow through flow absolutely right through. easily into this realm. The third thing that you really have to do is the smaller models. So like our engagement with Meta, for example, yeah. the Llama 3.2, we have a 1 billion parameter model. The 1 billion parameter model can run directly on the smart glass. Now you're opening up a whole gamut of new use cases that were just not there before. You know. That's, that's just the third step. But fourth step is, you know, the products that we have out there in the market today, the march of the transistor improvement continues. So now I can use the same use case, but with much lesser power. Yeah. That's the IP level improvement that I can have. The transistor level improvement is the second one. And then the third one is basically architecture level improvement. So in all our products, the way, you know, I have been uh, driving the roadmap has been that we have the active version of the, of the AP. But we also are able to run it in what we call the always-on subsystem. Yeah. This is our low-power islands and all, right? 
So now you can imagine that I can be doing a coarse level of correction with my smart glasses in that low power island in the very always on low power domain. And then when an event happens, I bring up the larger system. So this architectural improvements, the transistor improvements and IP improvements are going to get us to a power point where we can actually use these glasses all day long. So, right? so that's how it's all coming together, I feel. So it's interesting that, you know, I, I think probably the one that, at least for me, that, that maybe is a little bit mm -hmm. more nebulous is, you know, the, the glass, the glass and the, the wave guides and all mm -hmm. that stuff, right? So when they start putting that in, do do you and and a lot of people use these glasses be, to to correct their vision as well right? yes yes um do you envision being able to to still put prescription on it or potentially we might get to a point where the ai is correcting the vision through through the glass as opposed to an actual you know yeah so so this is a this is a very uh, good point as well right so what is going to happen is you can go today Take your Meta Ray-Bans yeah. to your favorite store and they'll put together your prescription lens yeah. along with Ray-Bans. Of course, Ray-Bans don't have displays. But that's because there's no wave guides. Exactly, yeah. As a next step, what you're going to have is exactly the same prescription glasses, but wave guides can be placed on top of those glasses now. Okay. Right? So, I mean, people are very well aware of the fact that in the world, there are certain countries where glasses are worn extensively. Yes. Right? And they are going to go through the normal flow. But you can even imagine in the U.S. where... Basically, you have your normal way of buying glasses. Yeah. You'll be able to overlay the waveguides. Those glasses itself will have the projectors on the side to be able to project onto the waveguide yeah. or micro LED technology or some other way of doing it. And essentially, you'll be able to have the same experience, but now with displays in them. Yeah. But this is where you really start to see all those benefits that you might have seen in some of the demos that we showed downstairs. Just imagine somebody who might be, uh, for example, uh, you know, is not able to hear. Yeah. Now you can have that conversation that the other person yeah. is saying show right. up on their display, they yeah. can read through it, they can respond back, or the speaker and the device can say it back to them. Yeah. Uh, a visually impaired person, for example, could be standing at, a, at an intersection where the camera captures that, use multimodality to figure out what is he seeing in front of him, and, and is able to tell him that. Or say, if yeah. there is a menu in front of him that he yeah. can't read. Like, I mean, the use cases that we can fire up with these things yeah are just going to be truly amazing. Right? I mean, I would love it if the waveguides actually start actively correcting your vision too, because you yeah. can even do like multiple modes. So instead of having bifocals or yeah. trifocals, yeah. you can say it can sense that you're looking far and then change the prescription yeah. on it. or the, the There are multiple it. efforts exactly on those lines where we're working with some companies that are looking at doing exactly that. That's where you amazing. could actually correct it. Now, that yeah. would be the holy grail that would be of awesome. Uh, yeah. Right? And uh, great. yeah. But I think already the experiences we can create are such that people are starting to see the value, right? Yeah. To give credit, I mean, Meta Ravens have done an amazing job and people can see the potential of what display-based devices or glasses can do. Yeah. And I think everybody's super excited about it. That's great. Yeah. Well, let's let's switch gears a little bit. I have to assume, uh, just because it's such an integral part of your strategy, is that XR and AR is part of AI Hub. Mm -hmm. So maybe tell us a little bit how that's going, sure. maybe how the... Um, developer engagement is specific to mm -hmm. XR and AR applications yeah. in AR and AI Hub, and you know, and what the device farm looks like in, in for this sure. area. So I think the way we should think about it with Snapdragon uh, Spaces yeah. on the XR side, we already have a really amazing platform for XR engagement for yeah. developers. Yeah. Because XR is uh, perhaps even a little bit more complex because now yeah. you've got to have all of those perception technologies that mm -hmm. you typically don't have in a smartphone right. or uh, you know, like a, a, a PC-like application. Yeah. Now you gotta get that hand tracking and eye tracking and uh, all those capabilities to come in. So we started with actually the Snapdragon Spaces much earlier. Yeah. We have a pretty, yeah. you know, we have thousands of developers. I remember you guys announcing it here right? a few exactly. years ago. Yeah. So we have thousands of developers using that capability. Yeah. So what my plan is to actually now bring in AI Hub for the AI application portions of that, Within the spaces. Within spaces. So exactly. they'll be like an AI hub. But exactly. No, okay. See, with that, what we can yeah. do now is since, I, you know, the way I've driven the AI hardware roadmap has been that it's the same root IP that we take it into the MR products and yeah. into the AR products. And by the way, we have two different roadmaps at this point in time for MR, just given right. their very different requirements. Yeah. With those uh, uh, capabilities in those products, I can actually leverage pretty much all the work that our team has done on the AI hub and bring in those models and leverage them and choose the platform that's available to be able to port that model onto that device. A developer goes in, yeah. says, I want to create an LLM-based uh, application. They're able to create it, but now add in the hand tracking and eye tracking and all those components into it also, and be able to create an application extremely quickly. 
So that's the vision that I'm driving towards. And it, AI Hub is going to be an integral part of that. Perfect. Well, it's exciting. It's an exciting development. It's exciting to see you leading up this Thank area you. because it's cl clearly, I think there's there's a lot that uh, that can happen here uh, and and seems like you're the right man for the job. Thank you. There's so, massive potential, I think, in the way these technologies are coming together. Perfect. Well, thanks as always for spending some time with me and uh, we'll, we'll chat again on the next next event. Absolutely. Happy to chat always. Thanks. Great Ziad. discussion. Thank